Hey guys, I'm here at Easter Jeep Safari and I've got the pleasure and the honor to be speaking with my friend Chris Collard who owns what I would say is the most, uh, well, historic, unique, iconic Jeep here uh, at Easter Jeep Safari. It's a 1978, you said? 1978, yeah. Uh, CJ7 uh, that has traveled from the tip of South America, Terra de Fuego, all the way to Prudhoe Bay uh, in a historic journey uh, that we're going to go over. So in this video I'm going to ask Chris about not just the Jeep, not just how we found it, but let's start with the expedition. Yeah, so it was, uh, it's called Expedition de, de las Americas with a C in Spanish pronunciation and it was a dream that Mark Smith had and Mark was the kind of, the, he's considered the grandfather of Jeeping. He started Jeepers Jamboree in 1953, just been around forever and he had this dream he wanted to drive from the most southern point of the Americas to the most northern point of the Americas and uh, which would include this section between Colombia and Panama the Darien Gap the Darien Gap so that's where the Pan American Highway stops from the south and stops from the north and it's just no man's land yeah. so so he got together uh, in the 70s a bunch of Jeeps CJ7 five yeah there are five of these and they're all still in existence uh, and how long did it take him? Uh, and uh, you know, how hard was it? <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, I was in high school. I wasn't there. I would have loved to have been there. But um, it was six months. The whole project was six months driving. It was twenty-one thousand miles. The Darien Gap section was thirty-one days. Yeah, tell me about that. Uh, we were talking earlier, and you said that b before he did it, there were only like three other groups that had actually made it across the dairy right. yeah. it's a lawless it's a jungle it's uh it's narcos paramilitary tribal it's it is the wild west of central america so who were the previous people who attempted it so everybody's probably seen the chevy corvair video on youtube that's pretty funny because they they came down with bulldozers and bulldozed this bulldozed this track and <laughs> they say that they made it i don't know i know that one of the cars is about 500 meters from the Colombian border because I've sat in it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and the other one, the one of the tribal chiefs told me that it's out in the in the jungle. So I don't know. They they did video a vehicle in South America. So maybe they brought another one. Maybe uh, they made it. All right. So those guys tried it. They tried it. How about the was it the British Army that tried it as they well? They did. Yeah. They did. Trans, it was a, well, that was the Trans Darien Expedition. Yeah. And then the British Army, which came through with the Colombian army and the Panamanian army and 200 people and this huge, it was just a crazy operation. They lost people, they had fatalities, and Mark's idea was doing it unsupported. And if you're wondering if it's still that lawless and crazy, it still is. Uh, if you're a fan of uh, long expeditions on motorcycle, you and McGregor just did the long way up. Uh, yes. uh, same basic route, o only stopped in LA and we got to the Darien Gap, he actually took a boat around it. He Everybody did. takes a boat around it, yeah, they he ship did. around. He didn't actually go through it. Uh, so before we get to how you found the Jeep, uh, Tommy, why don't you give him a quick walk around and show him this uh, really iconic piece of Jeeping history. Tommy, come here. I, I, I love uh, South America. You have to admit it's a little, um, well, it's not really the scale or realistic. <laughs> it was close for the day, right? It was close for the day. Yeah. But basically, they started down there, right? Yes. And, and they ended, <laughs> well, it's up uh, there. Fruit of Bay, Alaska. Yeah, it's up, up there. Here, yeah. And this would be Tierra del Fuego. Yeah. The island system that Magellan discovered on his uh, first trek uh, around South America. So let's pop so it. Pop the hood. A little tight there. You can see this dent on the side here. This was um, a winch cable broke in the Darien Gap. Uh, it's Darien is just, yeah, you know, huck it The yep. Darien is nothing but jungle and mountains and a lot of side hill stuff. And they had a winch cable broke. This was Alan Graham's Jeep. Oh, that is super clean. And I was expecting it to be a little bit rougher. I power sprayed it off. Yeah, just set that back. There you go. So it's, you know, it's a basic Jeep, you know, they're the, thing that's special about this is what it's done. Uh, it's got the 258 straight six in it. 
um, T18 transmission with the low range. They just came out with that low range 6.3 to 1 um, first gear. Dana 20 or a Model 20 uh, transfer case. I mean, it's just a basic Jeep. All right, so uh, tell me, come on over here, tell me how you found it. Because it is sort of, well, it's a, it's a Craigslist find, but it's more of a barn find. So uh, obviously, you said there are five of these, right? Uh, so people know about them. Where'd you get this one? Well, there's a long backstory to it. Uh, I was Mark Smith's UPS guy <laughs> in the 90s. <laughs> and <laughs> I started working with them, doing events around the country, the, yeah. the Jeep Jamborees. And um, I caught wind that they were putting together a 20th anniversary trip to South America and it, with these Jeeps. And so we shipped three of them down, uh, including this one. And I was like, man, I've got to get a seat on that. I got, <laughs> I got to get in on this group. So I was able to, was fortunate enough to be able to get in on that. And, uh, you know, time went by, I lost track with some of the people on the trip. And three months ago, my friend Scott Brown with uh, Fiat Chrysler Stellantis yep. uh, sent me a link to a Facebook post and it had this Jeep on it. I'm like, oh my goodness. And Fred Williams sent me the same one the same day. Do it every day. Yeah, do yeah. it every day. And uh, I was like, holy moly, that's Al Grimm's Jeep. And I tracked down Shane, who inherited it from his dad. And I was like, Shane, you're selling your dad's Jeep. And he said, ah, I got it. Yeah, it's time to go. And so within 24 hours, I was down there with my trailer and picked it up. I'm not going to let that one go by. So when you got it, um what kind of shape was it in? I mean, obviously, you didn't fix the dent, but, you know, was it drivable? Was it uh, starting up? Was it a runner? It, it started, you know yeah. what, actually, I went down there, and I really didn't care if it ran. You, yeah. It, I was going to buy it. Yeah. And he started it, and, you know, we drove it on the trailer, and I figured I would just sort it out when we get, you know, when I got home. Yeah. Yeah, so you bought it kind of knowing how significant it was without actually yes. worrying about Absolutely. whether. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, let me ask you this. Um What's the plan for it? I mean, obviously, you now have a bit of classic American Jeep history, right? This is beyond a one of a kind. You know, people are out are always trying to make Jeeps their own, but this one is beyond that, right? It's it's um, special. Uh, it kind of feels like I'm, I'm I'm sitting on a vehicle that should be <laughs> in a museum. <laughs> I, honestly, I am I am so honored to be the next curator of this yeah. vehicle. It's just like I my wife just said, I haven't seen you so excited about anything in a long time. So. It's, it's, so where, where does the story continue? Where do you, where do you take it from here? Well, um, I'm like, you can trust me, everyone. I'm not going to mess with the dents and the patina and the fading graphics, but it's going to get some love. I'm going to just basically, I'm going to do a full mechanical restoration. So everything from the sheet metal down through the axles and the transmission and pull the motor apart. Um, I started with steering last week, um, but yeah, I just want to, I want to keep it as original as possible. Um, we're going to be doing actually a whole video series, you know, Rick Payway and Don yeah. Jeepin. Yeah, There's, so Rick, uh, who used to be at Motor Trend for a long time. Yeah, he was editor of Peterson's. Peterson, he started JP yeah. Magazine. He, he went off and is doing his own thing. You're part of that. Uh, it's called Gone Jeepin. Yeah, and Gone Jeepin. Yeah. And dot yeah. com. Uh, yeah. And so you're going to do a whole video chronicling, you know, the restoration of this. Or the, it's more of a preservation, isn't it? It is a preservation. Yeah. 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 So I'm going to pull it in the shop and put it on the lift and start taking it apart. We'll be doing, like we said, a series of of the restoration or preservation process on it. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Uh, and where are the other four? I'm sorry. Okay, so yeah. that's that's a good, good question. Yeah. Uh, Chip Cash had one, and that is owned by Brian France. I drove with Brian in South America okay. in 98. Uh, Mark Smith is in his museum in front of Jeep Chamber USA. Okay. Uh, Tim Stegan still has his, yeah. and his son, Mike, will probably get it. And uh, Mike Arnold was the fifth Jeep, and that is, Mike is still around. Yeah. And uh, Kevin, his son, has. Um, so they passed it down to their kids. Does. In fact, if you want to get some great information on the expedition, Kevin did a book okay. last year. It's called 31 Days in the Darien. And it's basically, it's, he didn't write the book. He pulled from his dad's journal. His dad, Mike, took awesome notes of the entire trip. That's cool. So you can you can actually look it up. I'm sure you can also look it up online. I think there's video of it. I remember seeing some video. I'm sure that's, there on, is, that's yeah. on YouTube as well. Uh, but before you do that restoration, tell me while you're here at Easter Jeep Safari, you're going to actually take this and get it a little dirty. Oh, we are. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this the last week I've been working. This last couple of days I've been working. But uh, tomorrow we've got our Gone Jeep and Team Ride. So we're going to go out with a bunch of flat fenders. And, and the, Ed, uh, this, the name, by the way, is Edla. E-D-L-A. And it stands for Expedition de las Americas. 
And since we named vehicles after women, I was like, Edla, yes, that's it. We're going to go out tomorrow with the Gun Chief and crew, and in my next couple days, just going to be playing in the backcountry mud. And that's, you know, what a fitting uh, tribute and a fitting uh, way to kind of, you know, restart the next chapter of this Jeep's yeah. life, right? Uh, so, Tommy, why don't you just give them a quick walk around so they can see it. And then, uh, guys, as always, check out TFL Classics. Uh, thank you, Chris. I really hey. appreciate you showing me this Jeep. I, I feel honored to be standing next to a piece of uh, Jeep in history. Uh, and, yeah, that winch is crazy, dude. <laughs> <laughs> that is a Ramsey winch, and it is a monster. It's almost—it's like a, one of the old PTOs, but they put, you know, they converted it to an electric winch. Ramsey did, and yeah, Mark, Mark said, I mean, he was a big fan. He's like, we absolutely could not have gotten through there without our Ramsey winches. Yeah, I bet you it got used a lot. Yeah, it did. It <laughs> did. I like the, uh, I like the old school, uh, yeah. like little, uh, you know, the classic. Wire mesh bug screens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rock, rock yeah. screens. Yeah, that's pretty cool.